Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and today is finally the day we're gonna take the DeLorean Roadster, the 32 Roadster we found in Michigan on the old abandoned lift, which is back here somewhere, that. Um, we're gonna take that to our buddy Jim to get upholstery done and the convertible top done. So we did a fun little video where Jim came over and did some archeological digging, if you will, and uh, we figured out a lot, a game plan on the top. In the meantime, I've been working on getting some Bose steam bent for the car, um, sourcing the material, which our buddy Dave Martinez was nice enough to give us some, and or, or sell us some rather off his role. And, um, yeah, so now we're ready to finally take the car to Jim's place so he can work on the car. So we're gonna get it loaded up, take it along for a ride, and drop it off at Jim's and maybe do a little uh, show and tell with, his, uh, with what he plans on doing with the car again. So let's get started. for the roadster pickup. I think you're right. Man, out of this pickup.
head parts on it. Yeah, oh, no doubt. Like, ah, oh, dang, I gotta go to Napa to get some parts. Great shucks. I guess I'll take the roads. Mm-hmm. Oh, what a shit. What an inconvenience this is. Having to drive this cool. All right, we're all loaded up. It's Monday morning. We're gonna go see Jim and uh, take the 32 Roadster to New Jersey um, to Jim's sweet little shop and get going. So hop in my trusty old F-250 and head on down the road. So we made it to Jim's place. He d has dubbed it a long time ago, the Orange Grove. Jim is uh, very much a, while he loves all type of cars, he's definitely a uh, Chevy guy, small block, big block, W engines. He loves them. He calls it the Orange Grove. You guys will see why. We're gonna take you around and show you a little bit of his goodies he's got laying around, some of his cars and stuff that's really cool. And we are ready to unload the DeLorean Roadster and get it into his shop so he can start tinkering on it, doing the uh, interior and the top. So let's get the trail open. Hopefully it's still in there. Not it's just crusty, but the underpinning is fine. And it's original 32 probably, so if I have to save it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Brought some, uh, some garage warming gifts for, <laughs> for Jim for his 32. Cool. easy it was the process so like you told me I had them make them plenty long mm -hmm. that's uh, perfect because then they can shape you know once I get them positioned where mm -hmm. they where they really need to be to get the spacing just right and so we can configure where that curtain is going to go up in the air to attach uh, to the one bow in the front okay. um, 
some of these edges are going to get rounded off and, and plane down a little bit. Yeah, okay. So that they don't have sharp edges protruding into the top material, which did, would rub. Did the old top have some of that done already? Gently. Gently, okay. Yeah, not, they didn't go too crazy on it. Okay. They really didn't. And then at the ends here, it'll, you know, it gets cut the length and. Yes. And yeah. whatever needs to be done. Yeah, that'll all be symmetrical. Um, I found some, yeah, you don't have them. There's a carriage bolt that goes through that, that post. Okay. And I, I have some original knobs that came from a 32 Lincoln. Oh, okay. They're almost identical to, cool, cool. to the 32 Ford. Okay, they're I was going A little bit larger, but they're originals. You know, okay. I, I saved and, them. And I may have, if they work even for you for now for a placeholder, yeah. I may have some originals that came with the car. I got to dig. I still got boxes of hardware right, and things. Right. Um, but even to keep you moving, if that works, you know, that's cool. Um, and then what the, the front bow is the same thing. You'll just shave that. Yep. However. Mm -hmm. I'll be rounding off the front edge. Okay. You know, where, where it stands up like that, mm -hmm. this front edge will be round. Rounded, okay. And then the um, Heidem welt will go down here at the bottom. Okay. And would original have had more squared off, or were they still kind of rounded? No, they were pretty round. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they yeah. stylize out a little bit at least. Yeah. Well, that's, that's your pressure area for the okay. top. You know, that's where all the strength, where it's nailed on, Yes, okay. So they don't want a sharp edge because it'll cut the material. Well, almost. when you're driving down a road, the things are flopping like that all the time. Uh, and they're going to they're gonna chafe. Oh, you makes know, sense. You where the edges are. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you round that, and then it, it doesn't do that. Okay. It keeps it nice. Now, we have the seat springs. I brought the original seat back. It has some of the wood on it, but it's in really good shape. I don't know if you want to use it or if you're going to make your own. I'll figure um, that out. Um, I brought it with, so you, if you need it, you could use it or if you need to make measurements. Yeah. Please excuse this uh, disaster <laughs> zone over here. I mean, it's... Now this came from Dave. This is Dave cut this off the roll. We got to give a big shout out, shout out to Marti well, Martinez was... Industries. He, he saved our butts because it's almost impossible to get this stuff after he got his roll. So, and the color on this is what was this called? It was uh, oyster. Oyster is the color. Yeah. And that's what's really correct for the era that it was. Um, that's that's tits. Yeah, that's what it was. Because <laughs> white, because so that's like a misconception, right? A lot of people think, oh, white top. But you were telling me, like our old photos, the top looks kind of white, but that's because mm -hmm. what it's it would sun bleach right it bleaches, away. Bleaches, yeah. The old the old durable did. This won't. Right. This will probably stay like this oh, that's forever. Good. Yeah. yeah. But that's why I was and I think a lot of you have that misconception with these old cars because you look at black and white photos, the top looks white because it was probably after X years bleached out. Yeah. yeah so yeah, that's that's no line. But yeah, oh, Dave hooked us up on that. He sure did. And then and then this will be the binding for it. Okay. Cool. And the item for the front bow. Nice. Well, and the rear bow. Yeah. So I got I got three sets of bows made, and I'm gonna hook Dave up with a set of these bow, those bows mm -hmm. because for helping us out, you know. Definitely. They, Definitely. Same kind of deal. So. I called all over the world for this stuff. I could not find it. No. So after I sent you a little square, you ended up finding a good match for the headliner. Nice. Really about as close as it's going to get. So for anybody that didn't watch the last video, this car, this car is unusual because it has a proper headliner, it's, right? It's a full liner, yeah. Um, every bit of it was lined with this fuzzy stuff. And this is, what, is this like 40 Chevy or, or 50 Chevy? Um, or? This, this was used from the 30s. Okay. But and it was... up and through the 50s, maybe early 60s. Okay. But what kind of cars would, like in the time this car was built in the, let's say the 40s, when the top was maybe done? You would have found this in like a, a 47 Ford or a 47 Chevy. Oh, right. Okay. Like would have been a, in a Pontiac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a, a hard top or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's cool. That's where they, they just went right from the manufacturer. It's, it's a blend. You know, but primarily it's wool. Oh, okay. You know? 
Yeah, you've got to keep some mothballs in there. <laughs> yeah, 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 we'll have to do that. But color-wise and, and the yeah. weight is very nice. Nice. It's really nice. Yeah, so that's, that's super cool because now that we noticed that, even me going to some different historic cars, like the Henderson Roadster is, lives near me and I'm able to see that collection. And that car doesn't, I mean, that's a real famous car built, similar time frame, doesn't have a headliner. And once really? we, once you mentioned that to me and I started looking, I'm noticing almost none of the early hot rods have that. So that must have Not been, common. yeah. They were really trying to fake, well, <coughs> I don't want to call it a coupe look, maybe. But if it had a coupe look, you would have had the stringers going side to side, yeah. you know, to, to support it up into right. the roof post. But for whatever custom touch they did, that that makes this car really... It's unique. Very unique, and, I, and I, that's the one thing. I haven't looked at um, the Doan Spencer car that close, or photos, to see if it... Because that's the car that this is most closest to. So it'd be interesting to see if it has a headliner in it. Did it, did it maybe the same two people got cars done at the same time or you know whatever but rare very rare to see this so that that excites me because it makes the car a little one-off detail that makes it even more special so you would expect to see something like that in a pierce arrow or a, oh. a packard maybe or you know a cadillac v16 or something like that ah you might see that in a, super cool so they might have brought it in and the guy that did it said hey yeah. You know, this is what the real fancy cars are doing. Yeah. Well, and when you're making a top and you're sewing in all those filler pieces mm -hmm. around the perimeters yep. to give it the support and the strength and, and you're hiding snaps and stuff like that mm -hmm. and a couple of layers. Well, inside you've got a raw edge that sticks up about maybe two, two and a half inches from the binding. And you're looking at that all the time. With this. Don't ever see it. Gone. Real finished on the inside. It's yeah. it's finished. It's smooth. It's clean. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, there's no stitch work that goes through this except for where the binding goes. That's neat. Yeah, so it, it's going to look really sharp. So that maybe whoever they brought it to had done some higher end car work that even knew of. Could be. I can't imagine in forty, you know, forty seven. It wasn't like Pierce errors were just everywhere that you just no, like, oh, let me go look at one of them. That's a neat idea. It's like yeah. the guy that probably did the work said, hey, I, you know, I. Seamless. Well, and, and the downside is, it's going to take two to three times as long to build that top <laughs> because of it. Yeah, because that's easy. You got to make a top, then you got to take everything off, and you got to make this headliner, put everything into place, tape it down, staple it, nail right. it, whatever, right. and then put your top back on it, make all the marks around the perimeters at the right spot. Oh, God. Take the top off, mark where the headliner is. Take that off, sew it all together, put it all back on. <laughs> it's like... Well, it sounds like everything we do is like, if it looks cool, it's a huge pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, but it's worth it. I at know, the end, I know. At the end, it's going to stand out as like, you're going to look inside the car and it's like... Well, having that having that information of the old top, it has to be done. As far as I'm concerned, it, it doesn't has matter. It has to be because yeah, that's to be. what, just like the hood, just like some of the other details, it's it's part of the car and all the old photos has the top on so it's like it's the identity it needs yeah. to be done you know so i think tell that's... you what by the time this thing is done you're not going to see much hair in my head <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well if you need help let us know we can come over steve or i can come over and help you stretch something or hold something you're close enough <laughs> yeah I'll be... all right so we can't visit somebody's shop without doing a show and tell of some cars and stuff jim likes a little bit of everything so we'll start with your roadster 32 Roadster, you've driven this across the country multiple times with your... Four, four times. Four times. With your, you did road trips with your daughter? Daughter twice, my father when he was 80. Wow. And once single. That's crazy. So this, and this is an old California hot rod yeah. when it was built originally? Yes. Yeah, yeah. came from California in 69, I believe. Okay. And it went to Ohio. Then it went to Pennsylvania, and I got it from the guy that got it in Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, but, he had it for 24 years. I've had it since 98. Wow. And you put a lot of miles. Yeah. The paint, it's shabby, but it's been on there since 72. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you've, you've driven cross country four times, so. I put 140,000 miles on this car. <laughs> That's awesome. And Jim is very much a, uh, a Chevy guy at heart, so he has a very dependable and healthy 
engine in there. 327. Nothing fancy. Uh, basically stock. Nice. Little cam. It, it idles. You know, yeah. It yeah. sounds like a, a, a hot rod. It's got a sound. That's cool. Yeah. It's so. an automatic. Uh, and it's got a narrow 12 volt rear. Okay. Four inch drop beam. Yep. Uh, yep. You know. Very cool. For all this, all this paint work and before the accident. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, everything was done like in the 69 through 71 or okay. 72, I, mean, I think is when usually, they painted it. Usually, a lot of these cars, you can date them by the paint and the yeah. styling a little bit, but Jim's going to be redoing some stuff and... Um, I always wanted it to be green. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you don't know because you, well, you, nope. you said your daughter... Oh, she's making a lot of noise about that. She wants it to look like this. <laughs> yeah. God, it can't look green. You have garbage can. Oh, come on. No, green. God, no, no, no. Green's cool. Yeah. But yeah, this is a... It won't be the same, Dad. <laughs> yeah. But super cool car. But we very, had to... Very reliable car. Yeah. My God. All right, so the unusual one here, which is my favorite car you own, I hate to say it, but <laughs> That's okay. it's perfectly shitty, as we say in the channel. I love it. Um, when Jim showed up with this, I just, I was in love with it, and this thing's cool. So it's a... 1954 Austin Healey 100. Okay. And they... Originally a four-cylinder car from England. And it, they, and they, for people that don't know, they, they used an aluminum sections of the body. Yes. The center section of the body was all aluminum in 54. So Jim polished all this. At one time I polished all this. <laughs> yeah. But now it's aged in perfectly. It's 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 now just, it looks like I just drug it out of a field. I love it, but somebody was, you know. So these things are just this is pure hot rod. I love this thing. And the dash you polished up a little bit at some point. Yeah. That's the original dash. I put a Stuart Warner cluster in the middle there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all Stuart Warner gauges. Of course, gotta have them. And I took a Healy wheel and I cut it all apart and I put a Chevy rim on it, which was two inches shorter than the Healy wheel. Oh, nice. It's got a five speed in it, trim it, and I cut off a Corvette shifter and I <laughs> made it look like a Cobra. That's killer. That little T handle, it doesn't do anything, but it's, it it's looks fun. Cool. It, you know, you play with it while you're driving. <laughs> And then under the hood. Ah, yeah. Under the hood. Shoehorn Chevy. Shoehorned in there. Wanted it to look like a 283, but it's actually a 302 cubic inch. Oh, boy. You need a hybrid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This started out life as a 64 Nova motor. And, uh, <laughs> real thick cylinder wall, so I punched it out an eighth of an inch and now it's a 302. Wow. It's raunchy. I love it. it used to look nice, but it doesn't need to look nice. I, I, I love when this stuff ages in. We always talk about that with these cars when you build these perfectly shitty cars. <laughs> it's like you just drive them and it all like it looks like this was built in the you know in the 60s. Somebody built this car and that's what I you want. know and it now that you've driven the heck out of it. It's actually got a later nose on it. And oh, okay. The original nose, well, it's in the shop. It, it had like a triangular shaped grill. Oh, okay. And then the hood, the hood opened from the back forward. Mm. Like oh, a okay. Corvette. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. It was short. Yeah, okay. And I always liked this with the scoop, so. So what year is the, the nose that's on it? 59. 59, okay. It does look way better. I agree. Well, the idea was to put a Corvette tooth drill in here. Oh, okay. But there's no support. <laughs> there's no. <laughs> nothing to hold it. There's, those grills are heavy. Yeah. So, put a regular. It yelly. still looks cool. I mean, it definitely does. Thank you. So I have to ask: Can we hear it? Can Can we hear it run? It's badass. Every time Jim comes to visit, I just get excited because I hear it coming in. You can hear it run.
killer. I got my Healy fix for the day. Yeah, man. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. And it's got to have a heater in it, right? That's your other rule that I learned oh, from yeah, you. Oh, yeah, it has to have a heater. <laughs> we don't need no stinking windows. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Fun part. I bet, every man. Time, every time I get a little bogged down with work or whatever, my Take, head starts aching, I go for a Healy ride. Take a Healy ride. <laughs> <laughs> it always puts a smile on your face. It's that instant car. therapy. That's yep. awesome. All right, so next, this has been your latest project, your yeah. daily driver. It's going to be a daily driver, yeah. It's a 63 Biscayne. Uh, car came from Texas. The body was incredible. Nice. Had, had some uh, hail damage. Okay. You know, little bings here and there. But uh, it's all stock body and stock trim. Uh, currently, it's a 305 engine in it, or a three speed. <laughs> <laughs> was a six cylinder car. It was a six cylinder car, right. Mexican on the, in Texas. Oh, nice. Um, so, you know, it's a project. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's coming together. It's going to be. Stick on the column with overdrive. Okay. With a positive traction rear, and it'll have a 327 in it. Nothing crazy. Right. But for now, you got an engine that you could start moving it around and drive yeah, it a little bit. It came out of a Monte Carlo. It's a 305 HO motor. There's 19,000 miles on the motor. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, a little old lady car. Seriously. It's going to be hard to, it probably runs so well, it's going to be hard to pop that out of there. I know. Well, but, to be determined. <laughs> yeah. But this is just the perfect, I mean, such a cool daily driver. It's such a well, straight car. Too. Yeah, I know. I've had Biscaynes and Impalas and all that, 62s and 3s. Yep. And I always gravitated toward the two-door single. Quieter, less squeaks, solid. Yeah. Nice going down a road, all-weather car. Drive it in the winter. Nice. No problem. But I wanted creature comforts. <laughs> so over all the years, they collected a lot of accessories. This is the car that I got the electric seat for, for the leather for your car. Oh, okay. I thought it was a customer car. I didn't know it was, that was for this. Nice. I got that years ago, not knowing what car is going to go in. It's going to go in one of them. <laughs> oh, that's killer. So it'll have electric windows, electric seat. That's so cool. Man, Steve's power Steve's steering. like this is Steve's dream driver right there. One of them, yeah. Power steering, like power rigs, all the old guy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> old guy stuff. Totally cool with that. Yeah. That's cool. Old guy comfort stuff. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. You'll see me smiling when I visit my daughter in Florida in this car. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I bet. Yep. That's Here's killer. Yep. It's a Christmas tree. Yeah, it's Christmas every day, pal. There you go. Those lights are lit every day. Hubcap Christmas tree. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> Roadster got the has a, a short little home it's gonna be in for a little while. Yeah. And Jim, you call what do you call your shop again? It's the The Orange Grove. The Orange Grove. <laughs> Chevy <laughs> Orange. So some of the engines that are here, you give us a couple highlights on, on some of the ones that are a little more interesting. As I mentioned for the 63, this is a, a 63 250 horse 327. Okay. Nothing fancy. It's standard crank, uh, 30 over and basically stock. Okay. Um, that engine over there, a very, very good friend of mine has a 64 Nova. This is a Nova engine, a little okay. bit different in where the oil filter is, it's about an inch and a half higher up into the block for clearance purposes. Okay. See, I never knew that there was different, you know, for the yeah, different... Yeah, the Nova things. had all the steering linkage behind the cross member, and they they made a weird get, um, oil pan and made the sump be in the front. Oh. So the oil filter had to go up to clear the linkage. Okay. So That's... my buddy's Nova is a little convertible, six-cylinder stick on the column. This 283 is going to replace that. And again, nice. nothing fancy. Regular fuel motor. You know, right, right. Driver. So this guy right here. That's a 67 Z28 engine. It's a 302. It's all date matched. Um, like water pump, heads, intake, all that crap. Um, salt lifter cam, 
vibrates the windows in the garage when I run it. <laughs> um, I love it. Yeah, it shakes the floor, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> but I, I didn't have a purpose for it, but I had all the parts, so I just built it. Put it together, yeah. You'll find the right car and it'll go in, it'll be fantastic. Well, but for now, it's probably fun just to run it occasionally. I, I haven't run it in probably two years. Oh, all right. You know, it's been together for about four. About time you shake the windows. Uh, uh, yeah, soon. yeah. I need to scare some of the mosquitoes and the <laughs> flies and stuff out of here. And this one here, is this another you built? This? I built this. This is also a 302. <clears throat> uh, this started out from a 60 Chevy. It's a 283, real fat cylinder walls. So we bored it out and made it a 302. So it's got the 302 standard pistons in it and a standard crankshaft and a hydraulic 327, 350 horse cam. Okay. So a little valves. less wild, but still Yeah, very, ballsy. very manageable. <laughs> you know, very nice for us, you know, for street. I, I had thought about putting this motor into the 63, but I want to drive more miles than what I want to pay for with this. <laughs> uh, and you have a 409 hiding yeah, over here. 409 over here. That's a, that's a 63. 409 340 horse engine, single four barrel hydraulic cam. I built that motor in 93. For some day. I haven't found the right Oops. car for it yet. Someday. That's, yeah. You know. so. Have another one that's a four and a quarter horse. <laughs> oh my gosh. Has this, I love how this run stands all over and you got the. Yeah, this like moon panel or whatever, or Hilde yeah. Hildebrand panel holding store water gauges, of course. Oh, I love these. These are are these Stellings or whatever. Uh, Badger. Badger made dual yeah. quad. Yeah. I've had like singles of those, but yeah, those are such a good looking set of air cleaners. Those are killer. And Jim has the the, the gauge fascination like a lot of us do, so he has a little stash of store water gauges, of course. But oh, uh, go ahead. You want? Makes me drool. <laughs> this is what we do when we're when you're in this hobby. We go to other people's places to feel sane because this is. <laughs> I got a glass cabinet, but you got the drawers with them all set up. <laughs> I used to have a whole lot more, but I've been using them. <laughs> Panels are just. <laughs> right? Still going. This is what we do. <laughs> it's what we do. Yep. <laughs> oh, oh, crazy oh I love those suns. I actually, because of you, me coming here, I found one of them. Good. I was on the hunt forever and I found one with the little light in the center and for something. You know? Yeah. It's good stuff. Oh my god, yeah. I love it. Well, the five grand's were all like for the cars and stuff. The, the ones that were 3,500, they were typically like in trucks. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't even remember what mine is. I gotta look. All right, so we just got back for dropping the car off with Jim. I hope you guys enjoyed a little tour around Jim's uh, shop and some of the neat stuff he's got, got going on. Uh, like all of us, he has lots of toys, lots of projects, and is having a lot of fun. So we're really excited to get the interior and the top uh, done on the DeLorean Roadster. It is going to be phenomenal, and we can really start putting some miles on it then. So if we can, we're going to try and give you some updates as he's working on If not, we will definitely film a video when we go to pick the car up, get the car outside, show you the side profile, and all of that stuff, and uh, definitely show you the car as it is finished, so to speak. So, thank you guys for following along. Appreciate it. Catch you later.